uh, I've been working with Aruna for about 20 years. So. 20 plus, uh, <coughs> 20 plus going. So hope all of you guys uh, can hear me okay. Um, I think John covers uh, pretty well the technology, um, uh, what's, what's being used and, and the, the uh, kind of a general theory behind it. So um, in this presentation, what I thought of doing is just go through a few examples uh, over the years from a small coupon to large scale structures. And uh, in the presentation from uh, um, uh, Techni technique that we developed to measure the internal pool field strains. And uh, again, my name is Varunas Anuradna. I think uh, most of you know me. Um, and uh, I'm the director of Atlas, uh, this new lab at uh, NIAR Advanced Technologies Lab for Aerospace System. We focus on um, advanced manufacturing concepts, bringing uh, digital technologies like uh, uh, what John John's presented to manufacturing um, and, and all the way to sustainment. Um, uh, some of the, the, the people from my group, Supun, Nupul, uh, Shafi and Caleb, they were, um, over the years they worked on um, uh, the, the Aramis uh, usage, uh, finite element modeling, validation and testing. Um, just a very quick overview of Atlas. Uh, we're in the process of setting up uh, uh, this advanced manufacturing capabilities where we can build something the size of a, a 737 fuselage using uh, automated uh, fiber placement technologies. You can see some of the same technologies that, technologies that Airbus and Boeing uses like the Coriolis and Electro Impact. Um, and and we um, one of our locations next year will be, we already located uh, one of our locations already across from Spirit Aero System Wichita, but some of these manufacturing work will be housed uh, really next door to Spirit Aero System. The Atlas Lab is broken down into four different uh, groups that's work, focusing on automated manufacturing, uh, automated fiber placement, press forming. Um, John talks about um, uh, the uh, Argus technology that's uh, used for forming. Um, I see that technology being able to be used for some of the, the, um, the press molding uh, and, and operations that we are planning to do at NIR. And then we have a, a simulation group that will focus on uh, not just uh, global analyses, like what you see here, uh, looking at you know, fiber breaks and, and drilling operations. Um, and, and really looking at detail, uh, uh, um, progressive damage uh, uh, growth of composite structures. So when you start doing these detail analyses, you actually need to have um, um, measurement technologies that can go into um, that depth. So as you can see on the top, bottom left, you see the high fidelity inspection group that has uh, several digital image correlation systems, all the way from microscopic to structural scale, X-ray, CT, and various other field uh, uh, instrumentation. And, and we also have a full-scale structural test lab that focuses on uh, structural testing. But uh, as a part of Atlas, we have a structure, structural test rig that we can use for uh, validating health, health monitoring techniques, to validating analyses, to repair technologies, and that sort of thing. So um, the next few slides, you'll see uh, basically uh, several examples of uh, 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 use of Aramis from a uh, uh, coupon to a uh, large scale. Here you can see the uh, uh, really, uh, you know, a, a microscopic, uh, uh, almost microscopic uh, scale. Um, um, uh, readings that uh, you know if you can do a paint job or you do use the uh, the uh, the uh, the features on your uh, the test specimen gate section you can you can get uh, a pretty good reading that uh, you cannot get from a strain gauge or uh, uh, any other techniques. Um, this is an area. This is basically a compression after impact specimen. One of the neat features about um, uh, the Aramis or the digital image correlation is that uh, number one, we can take these measurements uh, on a hydraulic test frame that has a lot of vibration. And then when we work with John, you know, 99, 2000 test uh, uh, frame, 
um, you know, uh, it was actually a, a then Boeing, now Spirit Aero System. We're looking at um, um, full, full field stra strain measurement for a, a large test program. We're uh, working on uh, looking at uh, progressive damage growth of the composite structures. So, um, um, you know, we, the, 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 neat, the other neat thing about Aramis is if we are doing a fatigue test, over time, you can see this example um, that you don't have to, uh, you, know, block, you know, lock your system for a, this entire fatigue durations. We can take the, we can, we can get our calibration done, we can get the measurement done, we can move on to another test uh, in a different test frame, and then now when, when it's time to take the next reading, we can, we can roughly mount the system where we took the previous measurements and then keep, uh, keep taking these measurements. And some of the previous systems we had, we didn't have that capability. Uh, they, was, uh, they were sensitive for hydraulic vibration. So the, uh, the rigid body, uh, the, the, uh, the feature in Aramis data reduction on the, you know, you know removing the rigid body motion uh, uh, helps a lot with a lot of our testing. So, um, and, and the details we get. So in this example, you can see on the top uh, right, we have uh, a stress strain data. Typically, when you have a composite uh, 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 you know, test, you know, uh, specimens like this, we capture that final two-part failure of a composite structure. But unlike metals where you see a crack growth, uh, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of things happen inside the composites before it, you, before you see the two-part failure. Although in this coupon, we have a, a, a impact damage, um, and you can see this specimen according to the two-part failure telling us that it survived 400,000 cycles. But essentially, about halfway through, uh, you can see the progressive damage growth uh, starting uh, about half-life here. Um, so if you're doing a, a certification testing that focusing on no-growth approach, uh, and relying on these type of data that, that you know, almost have an error of factor of two uh, could be uh, a, a risk. Uh, but then again, um, uh, to do Aramis on, on, like if you have a test program that hundreds of these specimens, um, it's, it's sometimes it's not practical to take these type of uh, uh, data. So what you can do is you can use like a Aramis. Uh, uh, so here what we've done is use the Aramis uh, um, uh, the, the digi digital image correlation uh, images and really understand the progressive damage growth and how the rest of the coupon, like for example, here you see the stiffness reduction in, uh, in this coupon. Um, I believe this here is this uh, pink, uh, the, the magenta line. Um, and you can see as the damage grows, my uh, compliance changes. So in this case, my, or the, my stiff, stiffness start reducing. Uh, but at, at, at this stiffness reduction, now we can correlate to some sort of a, a, a certain damage configuration in this uh, coupon. And um, even if you don't have the Aramis data, because we use the, we develop these, uh, these processes using the Aramis, now we can use these type of uh, techniques to detect the, uh, the actual damage progression. So we use Aramis, not only reverse engineering finite element analysis, we use Aramis for developing technology, techniques that we can use for our large test programs. Here we are looking at a, a, a ground air ground cycling test where you have a compression load uh, simulating the, uh, the ground air ground fatigue mechanical loads. And on top of that, we are actually using a, a, a pressure build, a internal pressure uh, of in this panel. It's about 18 by 18 panel. Um, so we're pumping air to simulate, like if you were to have a disc bond on a sandwich structure, when you fly at high altitude, when you have a vacuum or the low pressure outside, but the internal pressure that has a sea level, uh, that creates a sort of a local buckling in that delamination area. And, and it's a pretty severe case where if you look at the, if you just look at your mechanical loading, um, this specimen, uh, uh, this specimen survive about eleven thousand cycles. If you just use the pressure loads, it survive about thirty thousand cycles. But if you go into a more realistic case where you have combined pressure and uh, mechanical loads, this specimen uh, failed in 75, 75 cycles. 
you know, several factors uh, off. So we use RMEs to kind of detect the local buckling. You can see here because of the, initially the, the, the pressure, uh, uh, because of the pressure, you have the circular disc bond. And then as the mechanical load start, you know, causing the, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, the, the dilemma, you know, the, the interfacial cracks, you can see the, the circle shape start taking an oval and final failure. Um, so we use for um, we use the out of plane displacement reading that we get from Aramis uh, as the damage indicator. So we know not just the strain, we know what the 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 the, the damage size is. So we don't have to stop the test and do any NDI. So in this case, we use Aramis as a hybrid of uh, NDI uh, plus uh, strain measurement and also the the, uh, the out of plane buffering. Uh, here's a little more detailed comparison of Aramis data uh, with the um, uh, um, with the uh, analysis, finite element analysis. And in this case, you can see uh, because the test not going to lie to us, right? So you can see there's a pretty uh, um, the strain strain values are pretty similar. But uh, um, if you if you look at our finite element analysis, we do a lot of assumptions and. And, and uh, uh, so in this case, we assume that the crack propagates in the interface, but after the test, you can see the crack actually propagate right below the interface through the core. Um, so, uh, so now you can go, you know, looking at the test results, the failure mode, we can go back and see what we need to do uh, for our finite element analysis uh, so we can make it better and we, uh, get better correlation with our experimental data. Um, now, this is a, a high fidelity analysis where we go down to fiber breaks and that sort of thing. So uh, this is uh, automated fiber placement uh, uh, test specimen where we have some toe gaps. And uh, if you were to use a standard uh, uh, abacus type of analysis, uh, you cannot really capture some of these very sharp corners in these uh, defects. So. Um, here you can see the, uh, the, the this is a this is a, a what we call a regularized extended finite element analysis um, uh, that goes down to really a matrix crack level uh, and fiber break type of uh, detailed analysis, um, and you can see the 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 um, the Aramis uh, reading um, again the strain values match very well. Um, one of the neat thing about this analysis technique is as a user, you don't need to know where to put the cracks. Uh, during the analysis, uh, the, the software will automatically put these crack starters in, in threat locations that in the locations there's a very uh, uh, higher probability of failure, fiber break and that sort of thing. So, um, so the neat thing is, so this is uh, uh, the, the software, um, basically, uh, cracks that place by the software, and you can see the Aramis reading right after the failure. They were pretty much right on top of each other. So when you do high fidelity analysis, uh, you cannot just rely on standard strain gauges. Um, you have to have very detailed uh, uh, full field measurement techniques so you can actually validate these analyses. Then you can use these analyses for several other things. Is a is a closer look at the uh, the Aramis reading for a, a single gap. Uh, so here you're looking at the Aramis reading uh, strain uh, comparison for Aramis reading, um, and then over here uh, this particular uh, uh, element had three gaps back to back. So that's why you see a higher strain concentration around the gap. So you can see a very very good uh, very good uh, uh, correlation to. The, um, the actual uh, analysis data that kind of give us a pretty good uh, uh, idea that we are in the right direction in our analysis. Here's uh, uh, some uh, uh, post buckle analysis uh, uh, validation um, activities uh, for multi stringer panels. And uh, in, in this case, you know, um, you use heavily the uh, the, uh, the outer plane displacement uh, reading that we get from uh, uh, digital image correlation, which you cannot use uh, any other techniques. Um, and the, during the data reduction, you got to be careful when you when you uh, reduce the data in this type of analysis. But there, are, you know, there, there's no way you get uh, this type of information from using uh, the foil gauge. 
Um, you can get some information if you, you know, if you were to use like a fiber optics or something, but uh, nothing like what you see here. So because you can take your finite element analysis and put them side by side and do com uh, comparison. If there's any issues with uh, the correlation, you know, uh, the test not going to lie to you unless, you know, unless there's some issue with the test picturing or the way you do the test. But if, if all of that's done properly, test is going to tell you the truth, which, which uh, uh, shown by uh, the, uh, the DI series house. Um, here's a, some uh, new uh, uh, technology we introduced to NIAR uh, biaxial testing, where you can apply uh, X and Y loading. Uh, again, for all four of these actuators can move independently. So we can create very complex loading scenarios, and it can also apply axial and torsion loading. So um, th th this specimen goes through a pretty severe loading conditions and, and Aramis not only capture the, the strain, uh, when we have a very large buckling, uh, large displacement, uh, Aramis uh, or the, uh, the DIC system will capture these things uh, in detail so we can go back and uh, do our model validation. Um, and then co uh, complex contours. And as you can see here, this is a very complex uh, uh, part. Um, and, and in this case, we, uh, we did this uh, in, in uh, multiple section, and we were able to bring them uh, 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 to one, uh, 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 one uh, uh, results uh, uh, presentation, as you can see here. Um, and then uh, large cylinders. So in this case, uh, we're looking at um, onset of uh, buckling uh, and some model validation of a automated fiber placement uh, uh, cylinder, about four feet diameter cylinder that has certain defects uh, uh, placed in certain locations. So we were able to use multiple RMS systems and capture the, uh, um, the, uh, the strain anomalies as well as um, Actually, even before we did the testing, we, you know, we can use the Aramis reading to uh, literally to balance the, the test picture, uh, just to making sure that uh, we are not loading from uh, you know, too much on one side because of some misalignment. So uh, basically, you know, before we started the test, we used Aramis as our alignment uh, uh, picture. So you apply a small load, uh, so you got a, you know, a just enough strain in the system to make sure that you have uh, e uh, even uh, loading on the on the uh, part. Um, this is a, a we call a PASCOM fixture where we have pressure axial and shear combined loading. Um, uh, so this uh, this represent a commercial aircraft uh, size um, uh, uh, fuselage curvature. It's a stiffened panel with a crack in the middle. Um, now in this case. Uh, you can see that we have two, uh, two systems mounted uh, to the same uh, article. Um, one looking at the global displacement, any uh, anomalies that could uh, you know, uh, you know, cause the final failure or failure initiation. At the same time, we were interested in the crack tip uh, strain. So uh, in this case, we get, uh, you know, I mean, this is a very expensive, time-consuming test, uh, but with the RMS system, one system calibrated for uh, 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 large wide area measurements and another system calibrated for a uh, uh, close range measurement so we were able to capture we, we were able to capture strain anomalies on the, both scales in, in the areas of interest uh, here's a video of the, the the crack growth and you can kind of see the up here um, and then uh, this is a test that we've, that we've done uh, with an uh, uh, older system that we have. This, uh, this is probably three or four generations before the current system. So it was all earlier on, uh, it was a test setup um, where, uh, where we had all these little trees and, and you know, all kinds of uh, distractions. And uh, we devised a, uh, a rig where we can take the RMS readings um, in, in multiple sections and stitch them together, you can kind of see some of the the the, uh, the the rib locations and whatnot. Now we were very concerned about this test because we couldn't get we couldn't get really close to the test article because of the lipid trees and load pads. 
Um, so when you move away from the article, uh, sometimes you compromise your, um, uh, the, um, the resolution of your uh, results. Uh, but as you can see here, the, the, strain, the foil strain gauges, that's the blue data, and then the red is the Aramis. And we, we you know, across the, uh, the test article, um, I believe this is about 13 uh, or 14 feet long test article. Uh, as you can see here, although we were uh, uh, significantly away from the article with all the distractions, we were able to get a pretty good correlation uh, to our strain data. And then uh, a few years back, we did a, a test program for the life extension of the F-18 where um, we extracted these elements from uh, F-18. We did uh, um, some strain surveys to uh, figure out um, uh, some of the issues with the, uh, the test specimens because these were not nice and flat and square specimen like you would make in a lab. These were coming from uh, actual aircrafts. Uh, so we need to make sure that, you know, we need to understand uh, uh, all these type of anomalies, uh, stress concentrations, uh, these specimens to uh, uh, really uh, uh, do a detailed failure analysis. Um, so this was a three-stage test where we did Aramis on the coupon level. And then when we went to the structural level, this is uh, the trailing edge flap of the uh, F-18 uh, inboard uh, trailing edge flap. Uh, you can see uh, there's a crack uh, on the on the leading edge on the metallic section. Um, so you can see the strain anomalies um, as we fatigue this. And then we did a repair on this system, making sure. Uh, so the uh, the Aramis reading uh, gave us a pretty good uh, 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 indication that yeah, the repair is good. You can see there there are no strain anomalies. And then we started fatiguing it after one lifetime. We did the full scale, uh, uh, full field strain measurements again to make sure that the repairs still, uh, 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 you know, attached to the article pretty good. So you, as you can see, these type of information give us, uh, 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 you know, a lot of lot of valuable information to move on. And when we went to the full scale test, we also had several several uh, kind of details. Of the, um, I cannot really show those results, but you know those the, the certain parts that we use full field strain measurements. Now uh, I'm just going to wrap this presentation here pretty soon with uh, something we've done a couple of years ago. So most of the full field strain measurements you see uh, uh, today, they are they are mostly on the uh, uh, the surface their, their surface measurement. But as we go into this really detailed analysis, going into ply-by-ply -ply failures, matrix, matrix cracks, elimination, internal damages, uh, it's, it's nice to have a experimental data, a full field experimental data coming from those internal plies. So the image you see here on the right-hand side, this is actually full field strain coming from the, the mid-ply. And... Uh, the 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 NIR the uh, the Atlas uh, uh, the uh, the high fidelity inspection team we have a uh, we got two systems I mean, I remember John mentioned X-ray uh, uh, Zeiss we have a Zeiss uh, 520 uh, that can go to about a half a micron resolution then also we have an NSI a 7000 system uh, as you can see it's like a small studio apartment we got uh, we can we can put large components in this uh, in this uh, X-ray CT and get really detail uh, uh, the damage growth information. Uh, so, um, and, 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 and because of the size of this, we were able to design and build and uh, rig this uh, X-ray CT system with a, a homemade load frame and a control system so that we can load these specimens uh, and, uh, and, and actually do um, X-ray CT. In this case, um, uh, during manufacturing, we we uh, uh, embed uh, certain particles into the system, uh, and so that we can get a sort of a speckle pattern, in, internal speckle pattern, and um, and then then we can uh, after after the test. So we, you know, while we are loading this specimen, we are we are doing the uh, the digital radiography, and then we use that information. Uh, uh, and then we use the same uh, software uh, and then reduce the data just like you would do on a, 
uh, 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 using the, uh, your uh, surface measurement. So as you can he see here, this technology uh, have, have demonstrated you know, full capability of the, the, the digital image correlation systems, uh, you know, going from internal strain to uh, from surface measurements to internal strain. Now we can take our finite element analyses and go into internal plies and look at these data and then kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, so this really take this technology to the, uh, the next level. Um, I believe that's, uh, that's my last slide. So just to, just to summarize very quickly, uh, we've been using uh, digital image correlation and we've been working with Trillion over 20, 20 years, we have uh, pretty much all the variations probably uh, throughout the year for this system. Uh, going from coupon to structural testing, we've spent quite a bit of time on this technology. We use it for our high-speed testing. We also use it for some of our ball uh, ballistic testing. Um, so the DIC is a robust technique, like I mentioned before, very, very user-friendly on hydro hydraulic type of uh, 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 test frames, hydraulic test frames, uh, because of the rigid body motion correction. Uh, we have a lot of bells and whistles uh, for post-processing post the same set of data. We actually done a, a study with our industry partners, including Spirit Aerosystem, Airbus, and Textron Aviation, and Bombardier, where we looked at different technologies. We look at the same data, and, and use multiple different uh, software system to reduce the data. RMS give us a lot of uh, uh, flexibility to use the same data in multiple different ways. Um, and uh, when we do, uh, when we do post buckling analysis, when you're looking at uh, buckling mode shapes and displacement, you have to be very careful. Again, when you have a lot of knobs, you know, you need to know what you're doing. Um, so I think uh, uh, the, the Trillion team's been pretty helpful in uh, troubleshooting some of those things. And finally, the, uh, the, the X-ray uh, digital, uh, 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 digital radiography and DIC combination had given, given us the uh, uh, really look at a deeper, uh, uh, get a deeper understanding of internal strain measurements and how these things fail. And that's my last slide. Unless if you have, if you have any questions. Be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Rowena. Mm -hmm. Again, I uh, would like to open it up to all of you to um, you know ask your questions in the Q and A uh, panel that you'll see there at the bottom of your screens. Uh, at this point, I think we're ready to move on to um, John Tyson's presentation regarding uh, composite digital manufacturing and digital twin. Thank you very much, Rowena. Uh, that's uh, just a really great overview of uh, some really wonderful work that uh, NIAR has been doing and, and seeing the uh, uh, incredible work that you have done to uh, develop the technology uh, and uh, in, in composites manufacturing uh, in general. And uh, your new Atlas Center is uh, just incredible. So uh, we're really uh, pleased to be uh, one of uh, NIAR partners.